Getting to Know the World's Greatest Artists, Peter Bruegel by Mike Venezia. Peter Bruegel was born sometime around 1527 near Antwerp, a city in the country now called Belgium. Except for what people can tell from his drawings and paintings, very little is known about Peter Bruegel's life. Peter Bruegel probably learned about art in the workshop of Peter Kroke van Elst, a famous artist in Antwerp. No one knew it at the time, but when Peter Kroke van Elst's little daughter Macon grew up, she and Bruegel would fall in love and get married. Antwerp was a very important city during Peter Bruegel's time. People from all over the world went there to trade and to buy such things as spices, books, and maps. They also borrowed money from the city's many banks. Wealthy people who lived in Antwerp were always looking for works of art to fill up the large rooms of their mansions. This is art. She's saying, you know, dear, I think we need some new art for the baby's room. It feels so empty. It's a good time to be an artist. Lots of people wanted art. Paintings were me. They were mainly interested in paintings of scenery, known as landscapes, and in the work of the great Italian artists of the time. In 1522, Peter Bruegel decided to travel to Italy to see for himself how the Italian artists painted. In Italy, Bruegel probably learned how artists such as Michelangelo and Raphael painted people in a more natural, three-dimensional way. But the drawings from Bruegel. Bruegel's trip show he was mainly interested in the scenery he saw along the way, especially the beautiful mountains. Most of Bruegel's first paintings were landscapes. He combined the scenery near his home with the mountains and valleys he remembered from his trip to Italy. Bruegel was also very interested in landscapes, but he enjoyed painting people too. He added more people to his work as time went on. This is called the Fall of Icarus. It's a popular Greek myth. Icarus here fell in the water. Many of Bruegel's works of art show his interest in the poor people who lived in the countryside. These people were known as peasants. Sometimes Bruegel painted them hard at work, planting, growing, or harvesting crops. This painting is called The Harvesters. Other times he would show them having fun during a holiday or a special occasion. Even though Bruegel came from a large city, he knew a lot about the poor country people and how they lived. One story tells how he and a friend would dress up like peasants and sneak into their parties. Sometimes they even brought gifts along trying to fit in. He's saying, Bruegel, I think they know we're not peasants. And he's saying, I wonder what could have tipped them off. Kind of some silly costumes there. <laughs> in this painting, Bruegel showed people acting out proverbs. A, pro a proverb is a short saying that teaches a lesson. In the 1500s, many people expected a good painting to teach them a lesson and be filled with lots of interesting things to look at. Bruegel's paintings did both things very well. You may have heard the saying, there's no use crying over spilled milk. That's an illustration of that one. There are many, many different ones in here. Hunters in the Snow is one of a group of paintings Bruegel did to show different seasons of the year. It's interesting to look at the beautiful scenery and the activities going on all over the countryside, but it's the way Bruegel makes you almost feel the chilly winter weather that makes this one of his greatest paintings. Because Peter Bruegel created his own special style of art and often didn't go along with the fashion of the day, his paintings weren't always popular. Peter Bruegel died in 1569. For many years after, people thought he was just a fun-loving artist who wanted to make people laugh. But Peter Bruegel did much more than that. He was able to paint scary as well as beautiful things and show what the people he painted might have been like in real life. 
Maybe more than any other great artist, Peter Bruegel created unforgettable art that is just plain fun to look at. When people look at a Peter Bruegel painting, they often think he used very few colors. At first glance, his pictures seem to be an overall brown or gray or dark yellow. But if you look closely, you'll be surprised to find that Bruegel used lots of bright reds, blues, greens, and even pinks. The paintings in this book came from the museums listed below. Visiting an art museum is a great way to see authentic works of art if you ever get a chance. We live not too far from a wonderful art museum called the Art, art Institute of Chicago. Thanks for listening.